Hello everyone and welcome to this session about management opportunities for technical people, people with a technical background, whatever the technical thing is. My name is Nicolas L. Oranger, which is sounds like that because I'm French. One could call me Nicholas Hellringer, which sounds way better if you ask me, but actually everyone calls me Nico. I have been working in the tech industry for something like 20 years. Uh, I have dealt quite a long time in Mappy.com, uh, route planning and maps uh, society. Uh, we have been, we started, we were something like two in the technical direction. And uh, by the time I left, we were something like 80 people, uh, mainly on Microsoft related technologies. But uh, the main thing is that building such a society, uh, I had to face up with uh, uh, both technical and management challenges. I did some time by my own company of consulting in a more open world, uh, more open source and uh, non Microsoft one. And today, uh, I think in a few days I will be uh, six years at Criteo, which is a mix of the two. Uh, it's an ad tech French company. Uh, when I joined them, uh, we were about 700 people and now we are 3,000 and we have somewhat between five and 600 people in the technical environment, which brings to management challenges we will see. Uh, one forward, uh, before we start, I will use the terms manager uh, in all that presentation. And I don't want you in the room to uh, stick to one type of management. Uh, that means when I talk about manager, I could refer to uh, team leads, technical leads, even scrum master, uh, middle management, directors, VP of engineering, CTO, whatsoever. The thing is I want to talk about management um, people that have uh, a responsibility of organizing the work for tech people. So don't let you stick to only your manager or one manager or uh, the ID you have behind this. Um, another thing is the purpose of this talk is not to do a management training. There are way better people than me that do this and they make a living out of it and I don't. Now, the, the purpose of this talk is to uh, assess uh, from the technical and uh, ground experience of what are the challenges, what are the expectations, what are the good ideas in taking up a management position in a technical environment, and what are not. To start with, I want to tell you a story, which is a little bit old, like me, uh, because it's the story that happened when I was at university in France, in France cities, uh, in the Grande École d'Ingénieur. And uh, at that time, uh, we had, the student, we had a, a newspaper. It was for funny things, non truly mat mattering things. And uh, for that newspaper, uh, we had some a room with a, a computer, a copier, a coffee machine, and a sofa. And that sofa was a little old and break. Not as much as this one, but the thing is, when people uh, use it for uh, relaxing between two classes, it was so break that they ended up uh, in the horizontal layer. And uh, when in that position, their eyes will end up on the ceiling. And they saw this. Don't forget your my friends, 21st century elite managers. Thanks for your attention. You can go back to sleep. So the question is, what can we deduce from such a, a, a message that was ticked uh, on, on the ceiling of a French engineering school? What was the purpose of it? One could say that French students have a big floated head, and that would be true. One could say that French have a big floated head. That will be true also. But moreover, uh, what was the message that the student that did stick the message on the ceiling was giving to the others? That was the stigmata of the brainwashing that the people that were uh, organizing the school and leading the tuition were uh, given to the student. They wanted, at the time, 20 years ago, that every one of the students become the manager. 
Why? Because they had a purpose in it. Because they wanted to have people that are becoming famous in the industry, to have new students coming to the school. Was that a purpose of having people finding the job they will be happy with, they will make a good living out of it? No. And that tends to have role model like this. If you like the odd keyboard of the phone, the haircut, the suit, not to mention the cis uh, gender bias and the uh, age of a manager, but this is the picture that the society gives back to, to us about someone that is a manager. And that comes from very far. What does a manager or a people work organizer come from? Where does, wh wh when did it be begin? And it began when the human being had to organize themselves very, very early in the history. We had to organize themselves to fight against uh, first nature, to be stronger together, which is a Superman motto, and to fight uh, man being men quickly against other groups of human beings. So the organizing and the leadership of something, of a group of human beings, has been tied to the military subject for a very long time. And today, if you ask someone, and if I ask you, what you have as an image of commandment, especially in the military, I'm pretty sure most of you will say that in uh, the military, uh, someone in charge, the chief, the leader, the general, whatsoever, is the one that gives orders, that must be obeyed, and that local initiatives is not valued at all. And actually, you will be so wrong. This is a book that has been written by the aide-de-camp of uh, a general that did the uh, first war in the Gulf. And it, it's, it's a book about organizing large teams, teams of teams, uh, having a, a single purpose that is uh, under locally by, by many teams. And in the, the foreword of the book, which is written by the very general that did uh, the campaign, he explains uh, how when you are in the, in the Gulf War and you have uh, multiple teams that are spread out in the desert that are under radio silence, that if you want to have a very directive way of managing those things, then you are in a big trouble. Because under radio silence, if you have a strict plan with detailed action to be taken and no initiatives whatsoever that is being tolerated, then you're done. The singlest new things that happen, the slightest change in the field cannot be adapted to. And he explained how in the modern military, they want to have one mission, one goal, that is declined into objectives, and then that they rely on the expertise of their teams locally to deliver. And they trust them to adapt. So even in the military, management is not what people think it is. So it's all about the frame. What frame we give to people and how uh, we organize the work for everybody to be at ease and adapting, evolving in that frame. If you think that frame is a bad word because uh, there's some connotation in uh, I've been framing that guy or that woman. So this is not what we want. We want a frame that does not train people into ba something bad, but uh, that help them uh, going uh, into something more uh, agile and that is adapting. Framing organization is about to uh, determine what is um, the beginning of the mission, what are the goals, what are the means that are at disposal for people to uh, address 
uh, that mission and uh, to enable uh, those people to express themselves the same way that we describe in the military. So the thing is, in your career, maybe one time uh, your boss or somebody in the organization can come to you and ask if you want to become a lead of a team. And the question that one may say is, why me? What I've done wrong to, to, to have such an opportunity? And the thing is, is, it does not come from nowhere. Usually, most of the time, you have demonstrated good technical skill set. And on top of that, you have demonstrated that you can uh, leverage those skills to help others to do pair programming, to be a mentor in the team. That are the most common traits that someone is looking to have a new manager being set in. I mean, so you have demonstrated that you have, and not everybody has uh, the capability to deal with other human beings for the good sake of the project for the good sake of the group and for the good sake of the other people you're working with. So usually when you're proposed to uh, be in such a role, it is usually uh, because of that trait. So what are the expectations, uh, first of all, of the company? And this is very dependent from one uh, environment to another. Uh, but most of the time, it's as simple as get shit done or make just was a thing work. You know, you know the project, it's just, just make that work. And that is the good explanation, because uh, when something works, when a team is working, it's silly as it, you can see it on the face of the people. Everybody in your organization, when a team is working, when they are achieving the goal, when they have the mean to, to succeed and people are happy to be in the teams, Everybody in, in the organization knows about it. You can read that on people's face. But if we want to go deeper into what are the expectations is when it's good, it's you need to deliver on time-ish. You need to deliver money-wise-ish. And most of all, you must have a team that is happy to come work for you. Because in a tech environment as today, if you fail to that first objective of having a group that is happy to work together and come to work, then you're failing the first objective. That is when things go very well and when the, when the expectations are okay, but you could also be proposed to uh, take care of a group of people that don't have the good skill set, that need to deliver something uh, way before it's done, uh, with reducing the money and not taking of people. My advice is check for that first because you don't want to be that case. The next thing is, and most of the people uh, tend to forget about this, is about what are, sorry, the expectation. What are the expectations of the people, the group of people that could be a five member team, that could be a whole organization. I'm taking care of a group of people, the SRE department of QTO, which is 150 people. The thing is, the expectation of the team members, of group members, direction members, are different from one human being to another. Because we are all different. And the thing is, if you want to address that thing globally, you're failing every single time. And the thing is how to find enough time to listen, understand the expectation of all these people. There is one tool that needs to be acquired by any new manager, any size the organization is, is the one one Taking time in a regular manner, in a planned manner, for every single people in your organization to listen to what they, their needs. That could be career needs, that maybe means I don't have the tool I require, I need a training, I want to go somewhere, uh, or more focus on the project. But if you don't do that step, you cannot just judge about how the uh, needs everyone has. Of course, if you have an organization that spreads through 10 or 100 of people, then you cannot have that relationship with everyone. 
So you need to have middle management. This is crazy how people, technical one especially, uh, are against uh, hierarchical middle management, but how much they value the relationship they have with their manager. So we need, we need, one needs to find a balance between the time they can give and the organization that is needed to give such, such time and feedback. The thing is, when you take a position in management and you end up in those conflicting uh, or not very aligned uh, expectations from the company and the people, you feel nonplussed, as they say in English. In French, we say, se sentir comme une poule avec un couteau, to feel like a chicken with a knife. You have been evaluated and praised for your technical capabilities, working with people, achieving technical things, delivering things, and you've been graded, promoted to a new role where the expectations are talking to people, drinking coffee, organizing work. This is stupid. This is stupid because you, you don't know what to do. You, you've never been trained like this. But the thing is, as I said, you've been detected as someone that can rely on the human relationship to attain technical goals. And this is just the next step in that path. The metaphor is often the one of the mountain guide. The mountain guide has a responsibility of setting up the group, planning the path, ensuring that everyone is well equipped to deal with the dangers that lies ahead. The role of the mountain guide is not to do every step in place of each person in the group. You don't have to go in the code of every person in the group. You need to set up an environment that everyone feels confident in their capability first, in the goals that are being set up. If you set up a high, too high goal for people that are beginners in mountain hiking, then people won't feel confident about it. So, and the, the, the little salt that is added to this about the work organization is that you're responsible for the thing. If things go sideways, then people are coming to you. The same way people come to the mountain guide if he comes back to the camp with two people missing. That added salt is a huge responsibility. The thing is, you are in good shape to do so. You have good training, you have good skill set, and everyone believes in you to do so, except yourself. This is so bad because as technical people, one thing we have learned, and especially in that environment that is ever changing as the way we are dealing with technology today, we've learned to learn. The fact that you are here in the room proves that you have the capability to learn. You have more than the capability, you have the will to learn from others. And the thing is that managing people, as I said in the beginning, is a very, very, very ancient topic. There are hundreds of books that deal with the situation. There are hundreds of trainings about management, and I know how much people from a technical environment hate management training. But the good news on top of all this is that we do have actual books that deal and explain about managing technical people in the modern world. This book is from Camille Fournier. In that book, after something like 15 years of management, I found exactly what I need, exactly what I thought that would not be written. Every single occasion or difficulty I came across, misunderstanding or puzzling situation I had to be faced with before, was described in the book in a very simple way, an actionable one. And the, the book is uh, architected uh, from an IC role, individual contributors. And it explains what are the expectations and what are uh, the means that you have to succeed in that role. And then it goes on. Uh, managing an intern, being a tech lead, being a team leader, being a manager of team leader, being a manager of manager, being a director, being a CTO, 
key explain for each role what are the expectations for the people of the group and what are the expectations from the company. That helps you as a technical person understanding the situation you are stepping in. The book is worth reading a hundred times. And then you can have also people that have less good motivation to step in, into the role. The weirdest motivation I ever cr came across for taking up a leadership position was a guy that went to me asking for being a team lead. And I asked him, okay, what for? What is your motivation? Do you want to help people grow? And he said, no. No, I don't want to talk to people. But every other week, at Sunday, where I am at lunch with my father and mother-in-law, they ask me, you're 35, you've done the best training in France. Why are you not already a manager? And that is social pressure. And this is something that is really, really, really strong. The society expects for successful technical people to be mandatory directed into managing people. Is that good? No. Is that strong? Oh, yes, it's strong. The other reason I have had of someone is, and that multiple times, was someone that told me, oh, I want to be a lead, because that way I will finally get to choose what, how we do things. And nobody will ask against my advices. Again, very bad motivation to become a lead, because this is completely not aligned with the expectation of the group and the company. Stepping up into a management position is never about making his own choices first but more about organizing how we collaborate into making those decisions a good thing. The next thing is money. I won't lie to you. The more you manage in most of the country, in most of the company, in most of the, of the roles, not only technology, the more you manage, the more you earn money. Is that fair? I don't know. But this is the truth. And aside the fairness of the situation, the thing we must look at is, does that bring good insight of taking up a management position? Because you, when you are taking up a management position, because there's a money raise associated with it, then it is a promotion. And actually, it's a role change. And if it's a promotion and you can earn more money, and you try it for six months, if you don't like it, what's happening? You are demote, demote? Is it, is the word exist? You, you, you rent the, you let the, the money back? You change the role back? How that happens? That makes taking up the position very difficult. Because you cannot try to be a lead, a technical manager, director, VP of CTO. Or you try, you fail, and you resign. Is that a good way of handling a company? No, it's not. So you, if you, are want, if you, are, if you want to try this to uh, check if it's something that is happening to you on a daily basis, it's something that you want to do your daily job with, you need to find means to try it, be it uh, the Scrum Master for a while, being a technical leader, but with no management uh, side on the topic, on a project, just to check. They say it takes 21 days to get the habit of doing something new. Give you at least three weeks trying something before checking up, well, yeah, I want to sign to be a leader of the group uh, and checking up on people, careers, uh, issue, uh, travel management, if they can go to a conference or not. Uh, no, okay, let's try this for a while before setting that in stone.
And that is the main reason for failure. The misunderstanding of the role of the expectation of what actually that means to interact with people, what the people want from your leader. And the fact that you are framed into something that you cannot get out of it. You are bound to succeed or to leave. That is a very strong commitment. And there are some organizations that deal with that, saying that becoming a lead or a manager is not a promotion, it's a role change. And there is no money associated with it. And that is very difficult, because I've seen people that take, took up management position, and the first thing they did was to check the employee list to assess that everyone in their group was paying less than they did. And the, the money you make about being any role in a company must be associated with the gains the company has from your presence, not what kind of a job you're doing. Yes, it's difficult to find t people that have do both have the technical expertise and the management skill set or experience. So that tends to push salary compensation upwards. But if in a group there is someone that is a technical expert that brings a lot of ROI or means, technically wise, if he's paid more than me, than any leader, that's okay. It is not about the social pressure that you are the leader, you should be more paid. Check that with the people that are proposing you to be a leader. And the thing is, the biggest difficulty is to deal with human beings. The easy part is to deal with people that are behaving badly, human-wise. If you are taking a decision and you give a feedback to someone that everybody knows is a pain, that's easy. The great difficulty and when you should be prepared to and read books and have trainings is about dealing with people that do their best for years and don't manage to get up to the bar or to the minimum of what they expected for their role. That is very difficult. If you're looking at managing and stacking up bad people, that's easy if you're looking the way that is. Let me just check something. Um, can everyone in the room think of someone they have at work that they think they are a pain in the neck. Has everyone, some, someone in mind that you have difficulty to work with? Okay, good. I can assure you, every single person you are all thinking of, the first thing in the morning they, they think about when they got up is not, oh, how hard I will be a pain at work today. No. But if you have one, that's a psychopath. Uh, we, can, we can deal with it, but no, people are in a bad mood, a bad situation, a bad work understanding and the way they interact with others because of the situation, because the alignment of what they think they can do, what they think they can do, what is waiting for them, or at least what they perceived, and the, 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 the non, you know, fitting between the two. And we go back to what is the frame? Is that explicit? First, is there a frame? What is the start of the mission? What is the end? What is the mean? And did I have a good understanding, talk, conversation with a person? That we have a match on the definition of all this. There's a book, again, books, 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 uh, about how to deal with human interaction. There is many of them. This is the one I like the most because the till is awesome. The no us all rule. And there's multiple uh, interactions that uh, are described in the book. The one that I remember the most, and I read the book something like uh, every other year, is hiring. If you have a hiring session with someone and you have the slightest 
feeling that the person will be a pain, don't hire them. Whatever the need you have internally. Because everything is about the fit, the culture, and the way the group is interacting with each other. And that is your responsibility as a manager. But if you are passing interview, technical ones or non-technical ones, for people in your team, you must ask you something. You need to be kind with the candidate, because that is a very stressful situation. No one is candidate as a job. This is something new every single time. So you need to be considerate for that. But if you have the impression that, oh, that will be difficult with that one, OK, make you, give you a chance. Don't, don't, don't be bound to hire people with great skills uh, that uh, will break your team and spirit. This is a tweet. You say, VP of engineering, I hear, as in code in five years. So I am VP of engineering. I feel concerned. But that's not true. I did some code that reached production. But I want, with that, I want to get back to uh, the trial in incompetence that has been done to technical manager globally. So this is not a, an actual response that was made to me. This is a parodical account. But that illustrates how people uh, with a technical skill set um, have a um, requirement of their management. And this is silly because it's, com it's understandable that people expect their management to understand what they do. But pushing that into you need to demonstrate that you can do on a daily basis something, this is stupid. So between a manager that doesn't understand anything and take back decision on top of that incompetency, and someone that is doing a daily job of expressing and you know proving their uh, teams that they have the skill set to do their job in their stead. That, uh, in my work life, I came across a CTO that was coding every single day. What do you think about this? Is that good or bad? Ah. He was doing amazing code, I, I technically. Good reviews, very well tested, rich in prod in a matter of days. <coughs> Wonderful. You know what? People hated him. Why? Because the expectation of the group is not to deliver code in their place. It is about organizing the work, that everybody has a purpose and good understanding and can interact together. There is a wonderful blog post from Charity Myers. She's CEO of Honeycomb. And uh, this is from a series. And that particular one came out after, and she explained in the blog post, uh, one of her friends asked about, oh, I, I, I am a manager, technical manager for something like five years. And I'm wondering, I'm, uh, I'm losing touch with the ground. How can I deal with it? Should I resign and take another job? How, how, how do I handle the situation? And she said there's two ways of uh, approaching the leadership in technical environment. This is a ladder and the panel. The ladder is you want to grow as a manager and uh, your objective is tied to the number of people in your organization because this is a mock good manager, how they uh, value the, the work they have done. Oh, I had 30 people, now I have 50, the next step is 70, wow. Or you can ask yourself how you can bring value to the group of people you are in charge of, whatever the size. How you can do management, technical management for a while, and that get back uh, to gain some actual skill set to avoid being what was said in the keynote, the, the, the PowerPoint architect. The thing is, do not do the pendulum. You can do both in the same time. I did personally do uh, what we call at Criteria a Voyager, something that uh, everyone in a team can spend a sprint, so two weeks in another team, to learn stuff, help on something, collaborate whatsoever. 
So I did code because I did to, uh, sprint with a, a team. I did had uh, geo spatial things uh, skill set that was required for a certain module that was not updated for years. And I did that. And I did two years later spend a whole sprint with a research team to understand uh, their need because they are my clients. We are uh, handling big uh, Adobe clusters. And uh, I wanted to from their point of view, gain some skill set to understand better why do you need Python on top of machine learning? Why is it so useful? What is a logical regression you're talking uh, any days? And that is a good thing to take the time to keep in touch and to be uh, up to date with the technology. This is mandatory. So have a look at the, the blog of uh, Charity. Uh, that post is amazing. That there is so so many amazing posts. So wh why I'm doing this talk today? Uh, because often I hear people that uh, have issues with their management, both on the technical side of things, um, meaning that they feel that their management is not up to date enough with the technology they're dealing, so they're taking bad decisions. So that in one of the message, do that. Explain to your boss. If you think that your boss is not technical enough, take a sprint, walk in pairs with him, take him time to upgrade the situation. And the other thing is, if you have any feeling about that could be interesting for me, please find the mean to test it, find the mean to Try it for a while, three weeks at least, to see if really you want to talk to people or not. Because the more people that will go in that kind of a job with a good motivation and the good will to do the proper job analytic, the less we will see the people that are bad at it. What is my motivation over 20 years of doing that kind of a job? I set aside, obviously there are people that were not happy with my management, of course. Over 20 years, I just hope that I have touched the life and uh, the evolution of, let's say, maybe 20, 10, maybe five people. And I just give a little boost into how I can help them becoming better professional, uh, interacting with other better person. And that is a full motivation I have in the role. So if Everything that I said has light a spark in you. Please come chat, consider the situation, read books, train yourself into that. And that is, will be awesome for uh, the time that I've taken you today. Uh, shameless advertisement for people that I love, following on Twitter especially. Uh, uh, Tammy Button, uh, she works at Gremlins. She is into chaos engineering. Uh, which is very uh, deep in my heart in terms of SRE and DevOps. Uh, she has amazing posts on how to uh, help people learn in the process. Uh, Alex Kin, she is working uh, at the moment for uh, helping people that are, uh, uh, have broken life to uh, regain uh, employment in the vicinity of York, if I remember well, by coding. And she has done an amazing talk about how I became a better programmer by shaving my head, which is amazing about diversity and the perception of people. And again, if you are considering, of, even if you don't want to be a manager, if you want to understand what are the, the means, the uh, things that you can require from your management, Read this book, it gives you a lot of things. I please you, read this book, read this book, read this book. Thank you for your time.